Now it's time for the last problem in 10-3. Um, we're going to be doing this problem right here. Um, we're trying to determine whether um, max fly golf balls conform to a diameter of 1.68 inches. Now, of course, no golf ball is really going to be exactly 1.68, but what they want is to be around 1.68. Right? You don't want golf balls that are too big or too small, so this is a two-tailed test. So the first thing I'm going to do, just to make my life a whole lot easier, is I'm going to copy, haha, copy and paste some old stuff. Right? That'll give me at least a starting point for where to begin with this problem. No, I better not have done that. I'm going to make this smaller though. Okay, so let's see here. We have all this lovely data, isn't it pretty? And the first thing, of course, you notice is they, they give you this picture because they need to prove to you that it's normal. See this? No outliers, no little stars. And then they want to know, does it conform, right? In other words, does it, right, do these balls stay around 1.68? So let's type in the info. 1.68, that's our mean. Level of significance, 0.04. Standard deviation, well, they don't give it to you in the problem, but they do give you the data. So you've got to type equals STDEV, and then you would highlight the data, right? We only learned how to do that in section 3.2. It was a long time ago, I know. Um, for how many there are, you can use the count function, or you could just count them yourself, but, you know, there's 12 of them. But um, if you use count, it'll count how many cells there are. X bar would be the average. So I'm going to type the average of this data. Right? All stuff we learned how to do in Chapter 3, believe it or not. I know, it seems like a long time ago. All right, then, because I copied and pasted, this was automatically calculated, the standard error. It's S, right here, divided by the square root of N. And now I need a little bit more here. Because this is a two-tailed test, so I'm going to right-click. I'm going to insert. Well, I highlighted both those cells, by the way. I'm going to shift the cells down, and I need an upper critical value. Oh, this is silly. I'm just going to drag. To change this to upper and I'm going to make this positive T alpha right because the negative is the lower one right now let's do this this is T inverse now we've got a few things going on here first thing I have to do is go to this one the, the lower one and I got to lose this times 2 right? I don't need the times 2 anymore because this is a two-tailed test so that's already taken care of in the problem so you just do alpha don't do alpha times 2 anymore. You only need that for a one-tailed test. All right, now down here, all the things got shifted. So let me, whoopsie, hey, come back. There he is. So I need alpha for that first one, but not times 2 anymore. And then, then for the degrees of freedom, I need the 12 minus 1 right there. Now notice these two are the same, right? This is the low one. This is the high one. But you don't need to multiply alpha by 2, and you still need the same degrees of freedom, n minus 1. Now, for our test statistic, this is where the t-dist thing really is important because this can be a low number or it can be a high number. So we're going to standardize, now let's see here, our x-bar, which is 1.68, right? And then we're going to have, this is 1.681, excuse me. And then we have 1.68 as our mean right there, standard deviations right there, okay? So it's 0.778, okay? That's the test statistic, t0. So the p-value gets figured out by the absolute value of this. So this is where you really need the absolute value, because if that number had turned negative, you would have been in trouble. But other than that, oh, except it's a two-tailed test now, right? So you better change your tails numbers to two, right? And then this is the complement of that. Yet again here, we're going with the lower one which in this case is t-dist. didn't have to be, it just was in this case. Um, sometimes it might turn out to be this other one. Okay, so that's your p-value. Now notice we are so not rejecting. This number is nowhere close to being beyond these two. These two are telling you, look, if you're anywhere up from negative 2.2 to positive 2.2, you're not rejecting. So we are not rejecting. Do not reject h naught, right? T0 is not past 2.2 standard deviations away from the mean. Or you can see it down here, p-value is not low enough.